Chapter 9, Decoys. Kona's friend Conroy, the cat, agreed to be one of the decoys in the master plan. And Stumpy's friend Henrietta, the possum, agreed to be another. Henrietta had a family of eight who traveled everywhere with her on her back, and she was passionate about helping with the master plan, for she wanted to represent all mothers everywhere. Conroy the cat wanted to help just because his thought, he thought his part was funny. But finding a raccoon to do his part of the plan took a bit more trouble. You know, raccoons keep a very strict schedule. If a raccoon sifts through a certain dumpster at a certain location at 11 every night, that is exactly what he wants to do the very next night. Certain dumpster, certain location, 11. So it took some extra legwork to find a raccoon who was not so compulsive that he could not change his routine for one night. But Murray found one. The raccoon's name was Robbie, and for the price of seven egg rolls and two boxes of hot tamales, he joined the team. Murray was so stressed from having to give away all of his snacks that he had to make a Reiki appointment with Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn said that Reiki was good for stress. But you aren't even touching me, said Murray, lying on the Professor Albert's coffee table. I am reorganizing your energy, said Gwendolyn. Okay, but just make sure I still have all my toesies when you are done, said Murray. I will, dear, said Gwendolyn. She moved her claws in the air just above Murray's body. And how are you feeling now, Gwendolyn asked. Murray didn't answer. He had dropped off to sleep with a bit of drool dripping from his mouth. And there's the picture of Murray and Gwendolyn and the candle burning. Success, said Gwendolyn with a smile. She covered him with a clean dish towel so he wouldn't catch a chill. While Murray was napping, with Gwendolyn keeping him company, Kona was giving instructions to three vital members of the team. The big night was tomorrow night, and there were some things to rehearse. According to the flowchart, Henrietta would first play her part, then Robbie would leap into action, then Conroy would jump in with Kona as the backup. It was all designed to get the firefighters and the Dalmatian out of the firehouse and the squirrels and the owls in. So the three decoys needed their to rehearse. Kona gathered them all under a picnic shelter in the park. Henrietta, your job is to pretend to be too faint, said Kona. Right, said Henrietta, with her eight children hung on and stared at the big chocolate Labrador. Henrietta then pretended to fall into a swoon, rolling over on her side. The children were still hanging on. Excellent, said Kona, but can you do it while hanging from a traffic light? Positively, said Henrietta. And the children, can, can they hang on? Asked Kona. Eight little possums' heads nodded. Fantastic, said Kona. When people see a possum hanging from a traffic light in the town square, which only a very tall ladder can reach, whom do you think they will call for the rescue? Firefighters, said the little possums. Henrietta smiled proudly. Right, said Kona. Now, Robbie, Kona continued, your job is to sneak into the firehouse attic tomorrow night, and as soon as the firefighters are called to the rescue, you will come out of the attic and unlock the firehouse door from the inside. Simple, said Robbie. Sneaking into attics is my specialty. Robbie popped a hot tamale into his mouth. And, uh, there's a picture of Robbie and uh, his hot tamales. Fabulous, said Kona. Kona turned next to Conroy the cat. I know, said Conroy. You don't even have to tell me. I stroll in and agitate the dog. The Dalmatian, Kona clarified. You get the Dalmatian to chase you out of the firehouse and up a tree. Then I'll come join him in the barking. Dalmatians are very high strung. Together, you and I can keep that dog barking forever. Cool, said Conroy. And after that, Kona said to them all, it's showtime. So that was chapter nine, the decoy from Gooseberry Park, the master plan. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did.